125 years ago through a concordat signed by the Holy See and Portugal followed by the papal bull signed by Pope Leo XIII Bombay now Mumbai received its very own archbishop and the archdiocese of Bombay came to be but did our Christian heritage in this archdiocese begin a mere 125 years ago? The earliest available historical references to Christianity in this region come from a Greek merchant who wrote about a community of Christians in Kalyan served by a bishop in the 6th century. The next historical record is a letter by a French friar which tells of Christian presence in the then port cities of Chaul, Thana, Kalyan and Supara long before the 14th century. The letter narrates the gruesome martyrdom at Thana of priests and religious brothers who were housed by Christian families. In the 16th century, missionaries accompanied conquering Portuguese fleets which took control of the territories of Basin, Salset, Thana and the Bombay group of islands and the first Portuguese churches sprang up in Chaul. In time, the arrival of religious and diocesan priests furthered the spread of the mission. The scope of their pastoral care was overwhelming. It ranged from building schools to helping locals tide over social ostracism and rejection. Frequent wars, pirate raids, political upheavals, plagues, epidemics and natural calamities. The arrival of the British in the early 18th century witnessed the controversy of the double jurisdiction between the Padroado and the Propaganda Fide. In 1850, the Examiner, the Catholic News Weekly, made its appearance. Representative of the Church, national and international, its coverage embraces the religious and secular, including analysis of socio-politico-economic issues from a Catholic perspective. As the faith began to spread rapidly, Bombay was raised to the status of an archdiocese in 1886. The original jurisdiction extended over 300 kilometers from Bombay Islands to Gujarat and included areas which are now a part of Pakistan. In 1928, through an agreement with the Holy See, Portugal terminated its hold over the church in Bombay. This allowed the Jesuit archbishops Joachim Lima and Thomas Roberts to repair the damage caused by the Padroado and the propaganda divide. Over the next few years, the archdiocese emerged based on the need to revitalize the community. The population of the archdiocese grew. By then, there were 102 churches and chapels and 10 mission stations. New church buildings sprang up and older structures were revived. The present Cathedral of the Holy Name was erected as the seat of the Archbishop with the residence attached. The Diocesan Seminary at Perel was inaugurated in 1936. The involvement of the laity increased and so did the devotions. Prompted by the existing climate, Archbishop Roberts realized the merit of an Indian bishop at the helm. And in December 1950, Valerian Gracious was appointed the first Indian Archbishop, seventh in the line of succession. His visionary and untiring drive nurtured the Catholic community in a newly independent India. He was consecrated the first Indian Cardinal by Pope Pius XII in 1952. His tenure of 27 years marked the growth and consolidation of the Archdiocese and included landmark events. In 1954, the National Marian Congress was held in Bombay and witnessed the filial devotions of millions towards Mary. In 1964, the Archdiocese hosted the 38th International Eucharistic Congress. Held at the Oval in downtown Mumbai, it was a tribute to India's place in the world and also the Archdiocese of Bombay's leading position in the country. Attended by Pope Paul VI, 
the event firmly established India's Catholic presence in the world. Cardinal Simon Pimenta, who succeeded Cardinal Gracious as Archbishop, took the Archdiocese down fresh paths when he encouraged the indigenous cultural practices in celebrations of the Catholic faith as a way for the Church to shed its Western image and to make worship meaningful and relevant. Another landmark event was the visit of Pope John Paul II to the Archdiocese of Bombay during his Pilgrimage of Peace in 1986. In 1990, the Priests' Assembly initiated the process for greater involvement of the laity under the stewardship of Cardinal Ivan Dias. In 2001, 470 delegates participated in the first synod of the Archdiocese of Bombay. Its objective, renewal within the Archdiocese of Bombay, guided by the Spirit. As a result, the parishes were encouraged to formulate their own parish vision mission statements, strengthen small Christian communities, and set up centers for community organization, initiate community welfare funds, train laity for inclusion and collaboration in ministries, organize training programs for parish pastoral councils, bring liturgical renewal, and organize ongoing formation for priests. Truly cosmopolitan, the Archdiocese today is witness to worship by Christians of diverse cultures and language groups from almost every state in the country in its 122 parishes. In this techno-crazy world where there is a constant need to be relevant, one needs a visionary to lead the church. With the mantle now on Cardinal Oswald Gracious, the diocese surges forward to respond to the challenges of the digital age. History is being made. The church is having its first ever Indian Mission Congress. Let your light shine through the Holy Spirit. Let your light shine for India. Today, Bombay celebrates 125 years of being elevated to the status of an archdiocese. We look back with much gratitude to the many who have brought us the faith and we look ahead striving to communicate and being the light to the nations. <laughs>